With the new and recent 1.4.4 update for Terraria, with swords being reworked, I've decided to revisit a challenge that I've done in the past. Can I beat Terraria using swords only? Stay tuned to find out. Alright, so we have a couple of options here for getting our first actual weapon. Number 1. I could run around the world to try and find the enchanted sword, however not all worlds have one, and that sword would only be able to take me up until the Wall of Flesh. Number 2. I could try to find some Sky Islands for a chance to get the Star Fury. With the Star Fury, I'll be able to use it throughout the entire pre-hard mode phase, however I would need a Gravitation Potion. Or number 3. I could go into the jungle and collect enough materials to craft the Blade of Grass. With the new rework, it became a much better weapon since it now shoots out projectiles. I decided to go with option 3 since I'll be able to obtain it 100%, but before I enter the jungle I chopped down some cacti to make some armor just so I don't get absolutely destroyed, and I also made the cactus sword. After making it into the jungle, a blue fairy helped me find what is probably the most important accessory for this playthrough, the pharaoh claws. This item increases your attack speed by 12% and enables auto swing for melee weapons. I was extremely lucky to have found this right off the bat. While collecting materials for the Blade of Grass, I stumbled upon the Gladius. When attacking, this weapon jabs 3 times consecutively, but since I have the Pharaoh Claws, I'm now able to jab out infinitely. I found a dead man's chest. After opening it, there were gravitation potions inside. I stopped farming for the Blade of Grass and instead searched for the Star Fury, but unfortunately the only item I was able to find was the Lucky Horseshoe because I wasted a potion from dying to a Harpy. So back to the original plan. After gathering enough materials, I crafted the Blade of Grass. I got unlucky and got the Shameful Modifier on it. It reduced my damage by 11% and knocked back by 20%. I made a gold pickaxe and then went back down to search for some life crystals. While searching, I stumbled upon something I've never seen before. The music changed and the blocks around me turned into space with rainbow fairies flying all around. I kept mining towards the direction of them to find a pool of shiny liquid and that's when I realized this was the shimmer pool. Certain items that you throw into the pool will be turned back into its original materials, so I had a great idea. Since I didn't have the goblin tinkerer yet, I threw my blade of grass into the pool to then craft it again for a better modifier, free of charge. After remaking my Blade of Grass, I found another Gravitation Potion, so I used it to find the very last Sky Island of this world, hoping that inside the chest would be the Star Fairy. And luckily it was, although it had the annoying modifier on it. After getting the Star Fairy, it was now time to fight a boss, so I started with the King Slime. Once King Slime gets to a low health pool, it will start moving faster, and that's when my Star Fairy comes in. I'll be able to hit it from a safe distance. I opened the treasure bag and got the mount on my first try. I then built some houses for some NPCs to start spawning in. I wasn't really satisfied with having a regular blade of grass, so I threw it back into the shimmer and got the godly modifier on it. And now it's time for the Eye of Cthulhu. I alternated between the blade of grass for when the boss summoned demon eyes, and the star fairy for when it dashes.
After killing the Eye of Cthulhu, I got some Crimson Bars to make the Blood Butcher. This weapon bleeds enemies on hit that deals damage over time. I won't be using this weapon all that much, but it will be used later on in crafting the Knight's Edge. It's now time for some better armor, so I fought the Brain of Cthulhu to obtain tissue samples to craft the Crimson Armor. Once the Brain of Cthulhu was defeated, I made the Deathbringer pickaxe as well as some new armor. To craft my next weapon, I'm going to have to kill Skeletron, so I built an arena and summoned the boss. While fighting Skeletron, it was very hard for me to land my Star Fury projectiles while it was swinging its arms everywhere. The only time I could actually hit it consistently was when its hands go up. I ended up using the Blade of Grass whenever it did its head spin attack. Now that I have access to the dungeon, I found myself the Muramasa. Now this sword was really cool. As soon as I damage an enemy, it creates an additional slash onto the target. I then found the Cobalt Shield soon after. The next boss that I'll be fighting is the Wall of Flesh. But before I do that, I gathered the rest of my life crystals to reach 400 health. I then made my way down to hell to mine some hellstone. With the hellstone, I crafted the Volcano. I now have all four swords needed to craft the Knight's Edge. So I headed over to a Crimson Altar to craft it. Swinging this sword creates an extended after image which was going to do very well against mobs. I went back to the Shimmer Pool and tossed my Knight's Edge into it. I kept remaking it until I got a good modifier. I then replaced my Crimson Armor with the Molten Set, which gave me more defense and a lot more melee damage. I was going to fight the Wall of Flesh, but then a Goblin Army arrived, so I had to deal with them first. After dealing with the Goblin Army, I threw in my Guide Voodoo Doll to summon the Wall of Flesh. The Knight's Edge felt so good to use. It absolutely destroyed the Wall of Flesh, since I was able to hit two parts of the boss and the attack speed is so much faster. The Hungries weren't even able to touch me. After defeating the Wall of Flesh, I am now in hard mode, which means that I'll be needing some better armor ASAP. So I broke some Crimson Altars and mined the hard mode ores, Palladium, Mithril, and Titanium. Once I had enough Titanium, I crafted the entire armor set. This brought my defense from 37 to 61. Now it's time to craft a pair of wings. I killed Wyverns for their souls of flight to make angel wings. I then farmed Souls of Night in the Underground Crimson to craft the Mechanical Boss Summons. I was about to summon the Destroyer when Night arrived, however the Terraria God said nope, you'll be fighting the Twins first. I wasn't really sure how this fight was going to go since I didn't have a weapon that could shoot projectiles, so I had to wait until they dashed towards me to actually deal damage.
Once the twins were defeated, I crafted the Excalibur. This weapon does more damage, but it doesn't have an after image like the Knight's Edge. I then summoned the Destroyer, and this fight went by pretty quickly. Then right after the destroyer, I summoned Skeletron Prime. After collecting all of the souls from the mechanical bosses, I was able to make the True Knight's Edge. Now this weapon was able to shoot out a delayed after image, however, the projectile seemed a bit weak. I then made the pickaxe axe and went down into the jungle to mine some chlorophyte ore, since I'll be upgrading my Excalibur to the true Excalibur. I mined a ton of chlorophyte ore, since I'll be making the turtle armor later on. So the true Excalibur doesn't shoot out a projectile anymore, instead it has a much wider range of attack. After locating the Plantera bulb, I created a huge arena for it. After I was done making the arena, I broke the bulb to start the fight. I won't lie, I'm not really a fan of the true knight's edge, the projectiles move along with your screen so it makes it harder to land hits. When I opened the treasure bag, I got really lucky and got the Seedler. After Plantera was defeated, I farmed some turtle shells. When I got enough, I went back home and made the turtle armor set. And now it's time to fight Golem. I used the Seedler because it's just a much better weapon for this fight. I also noticed that they did change Golem. Whenever you hit its hands, it doesn't retract anymore. After defeating Golem, I went back home and converted my turtle armor to the beetle armor. So since I have the true Excalibur and the true Knight's Edge, all I need now is the broken hero sword. So I used the solar tablet to start the solar eclipse. After killing my first Mothron, it dropped the broken hero sword and the warding Mothron wings. I then combined all three items to craft the Terra Blade. 
and oh my god, this thing felt so good to use. The visuals look so nice, and it has a huge attack range. So yeah, this is going to be my very last weapon that I use for the rest of the video. With the Terror Blade, it's now time to fight the Lunatic Cultist. After I defeated the Lunatic Cultist, I went on to destroy the four Celestial Pillars, starting with the Solar Pillar, then Vortex, then Nebula, and then finally Stardust. And now it's time for the final boss, Moon Lord. The terribly change makes it so that you're able to deal damage to both the eye in the head and a hand. And there we go guys, I was able to beat Terraria using the reworked swords only. If you've enjoyed watching this video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and also subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.